Dr. Neha Narula with Stanford Healthcare joining us now. Let's talk about the latest coronavirus developments. And first, we're hearing more about how COVID-19 is affecting some children. So what symptoms should parents be looking out for? Yes, um, unfortunately, our initial observations of the novel coronavirus not affecting the pediatric population has changed dramatically over the past month and a half. Um, of course, you know, this continues to evolve and we are still learning um, in real time. But as of now, what we do know is that children being affected by the virus, about 2% of uh, the positive cases are in children under the age of 18, uh, are presenting with a wide spectrum of symptoms. Um, majority of the children are having a mild to moderate symptoms um, or no symptoms at all. And it's what we've been typically seeing in adults as well, a combination of respiratory symptoms like fever, cough, sore throat, body aches, weakness, um, and also gastrointestinal symptoms are a little bit more prevalent in children. So the nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, and diarrhea. What we have seen more recently is that a small subset of these children are progressing to a very severe state of shock and multi-organ dysfunction. Um, this was actually first described by providers in the UK um, late in April. And then we began seeing um, uh, cases sprout up in Italy, Spain, France, and then New York in early May. And this is just kind of spread across the country in many states. And so a few weeks ago, the CDC actually um, put out a health advisory to healthcare workers and define this rare but new um, disease um, that we now know as multi-system um, inflammatory syndrome in children. And these children are presenting with a, a very persistent and severe fever. So typically 101, 102 degrees. Um, and this is lasting more than four or five days. And then they also come in with severe abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, pink eye, headaches, irritability. And these symptoms are scary, but what we're seeing is that these children very quickly go into a state of shock. Um, and different organ systems like the heart, the lungs, the kidneys and liver, they are shutting down very quickly. So I encourage parents not to wait if their children are exhibiting any of these symptoms, please contact their provider or seek urgent care um, so that they can be evaluated and treated accordingly. Well, it begs the question for, for children who are otherwise healthy, how's the pandemic impacting the well child visits and the vaccine rates for, for children, what they should be getting? Yes, um, the shelter in place, you know, it was crucial to flattening the COVID-19 curve. Um, however, one of the unfortunate outcomes of this pandemic is that there, there has been a significant drop in well child visits, and that has resulted in delays in routine vaccines and screenings in our pediatric population across the nation, not just in our state of California. Um, this in turn has left our children at risk for preventable disease like measles, um, chicken pox, polio, just to name a few. And at at this point, I do want to remind parents that our offices are open. Um, we ask you to bring your newborns, infants, and children in so that they can get their comprehensive well child care visit and they get their screenings, their physical exams, labs, and vaccines. Um, while we do want to you know, fight and stay safe in this pandemic, we also want to avoid any secondary outbreaks of preventable illnesses as much as we can. Of course, but some families might be actually kind of concerned and worried about the safety of going back into the doctor's office. How would you address those concerns? Understandably, the fear is real. Um, you know, we are seeing um, rises in heart attacks and strokes not being in, taken into the ERs. Um, I do want to assure you that medical offices, clinics, and hospitals are taking all the necessary steps to ensure minimal risk of exposure to patients. Um, I can speak for our primary care clinics at Stanford, but I know across the nation, almost every clinic and hospital buildings are incorporating some creative strategies to keep our patients safe. Um, things like um, for your uh, well visits or routine visits, we are having patients wait in the car and check in via phone rather than through the front desk person in person. Um, and then they wait until their appointment time so that um, we avoid uh, congregating in the waiting room. We're also staggering in-person appointments to minimize the number of people in clinic. Um, and then we've also frequently adopted disinfection routines, not just for the, the clinic rooms, but the entire clinic space in, in itself. And then of course, um, we're mindfully scheduling well visits and sick visits at different times of the day. Um, so there are, being, uh, there are measures being taken and I wanna reassure our community that we're doing everything we can to keep you safe. Please don't be afraid to come in. We wanna make sure you receive the necessary medical care um, in a safe and effective manner. 
for everyone's safety and well-being. Dr. Neha Narula, thanks uh, so much for being with us. You were Stanford Healthcare. We always appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Thank you.